it, it happened coincidentally that uh, I'd, in, the, in the first part of last year, I've been doing just some background research on, uh, on space. And well, let me talk a bit about that. So, uh, essentially, I, I was trying to figure out why we had not made more progress since, since Apollo. Uh, in, in, 19, in the 60s, we went from basically nothing, not being able to put anyone into space, to putting people on the moon. And uh, developing all the technology uh, from scratch to, to do that. And yet, in the, uh, the 70s and the 80s and the 90s, we've kind of gone sideways. And, and we're currently in a situation where we can't even put a person into, into low Earth orbit. And that, that doesn't really gel with all of the other uh, technology sectors out there. Uh, the, the computer that you could have bought in the early 70s you know, would have filled this room and had less computing power than your cell phone. Um, and, and so just about every sector of technology has improved. Why has this not improved? Uh, so I started looking into that. Um, it, initially, I thought, well, perhaps it's a question of funding, and that funding can be uh, garnered by, by really marshalling public support. Uh, so I thought, well, one way to, to, to get the public excited about space would be to, to do maybe a privately funded robotic space mission to Mars. Um, and so we, we figured out a mission that would cost about 15 to $20 million, which isn't a lot of money, but um, it's about a a tenth of what a low-cost NASA mission would be. And, uh, and the idea was, was called Mars Oasis, where we'd put a small robotic lander on the surface of Mars with seeds and dehydrated nutrient gel that would hydrate upon landing, and you'd have uh, plants growing in a Martian uh, radiation and gravity conditions. And you'd also uh, be maintaining, essentially, a life support system on the surface of Mars. And this would be interesting to the public because they tend to respond to precedents and superlatives. Uh, and this would be the furthest that life's ever traveled and the first life on Mars, so pretty significant. Um, and then when I started looking at, at launch vehicles, uh, the, the lowest cost vehicle in, in the U.S. is Boeing's Delta II, which costs about $50 million. And, uh, and that's, a bit, that's a bit steep, uh, what we were trying to do. Uh, so I made three visits to, to Moscow, to Russia, uh, to look at, at buying a, a Russian uh, launch. Uh, and uh, it's, it's actually pretty interesting uh, going to, to Moscow to negotiate for uh, a refurbished ICBM. Uh, <laughs> if, you know, on the range of interesting experiences, that's pretty, pretty far out there. Um, but, but we actually did get to, to a deal, but th there were so many complications associated with the deal that, that I, 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 it didn't, I wasn't comfortable with the risks associated with it. Um, so when I got back from the third trip, I thought, well, you know, why is it the Russians can build these low-cost uh, launch vehicles? Because it's not like uh, we, we drive Russian cars, fly Russian planes, or have Russian kitchen appliances. And, you know, when's the last time you bought something Russian that wasn't vodka? So uh, I think the U.S. is a pretty competitive place, uh, and, and we should be able to, to build a, a cost-efficient launch vehicle. So I, I put together a feasibility study, which consisted of of engineers that have been involved with all the major launch vehicle developments over the last three decades. And uh, we iterated over a number of Saturdays in the beginning of last year uh, to figure out, well, what would, be, what would be the smartest way to approach this problem of not just launch cost, but also launch reliability? And, and we came up with a default design. And, and that actually, uh, sort of fortunate timing, uh, that feasibility study uh, uh, finished up right around the time that we agreed to sell uh, PayPal to eBay. Um, so co coincident with that sale, I moved down to, to L.A. where there's actually the biggest concentration of aerospace industry in the world. Um, it's actually the biggest industry in, in Southern California, much bigger than entertainment or anything else. Uh, I, I was living in, in Palo Alto for about nine years before that. 